Knock, knock. Hi. Hello there. Hi. My name is Gwen McKee, and I'm a nurse practitioner student with the United States University. How are you today? Good. Can you give me your initials and your date of birth? MGS 10676. Wonderful. And before we begin, I'd like to do an assessment on your cardiovascular system. But do I have your permission to take a video and upload it as private for my instructors to grade on YouTube? Yes. All right, wonderful. I'm going to clean my hands with some hand sanitizer. And are you having any pain today? I am not. Wonderful. So as I'm beginning, I am noticing his neck and I'm inspecting his neck. Uh, but before that, I would take his blood pressure, uh, supine and also upright, in the left and the right arms. And then I would compare the brachial blood pressures and make sure they're the same, uh, otherwise noting uh, orthostatic changes with the blood pressure. And then I'm inspecting his neck and I'm noticing that his trachea and his <coughs> esophagus are midline. There's no deviation. Also, there's no pulsations, heaves, or lifts. And then now I'm going to go ahead and place him at a 30 to 45 degree angle, which is just about there. And I'm having him turn his head a little bit to the left, and I'm noticing uh, the uh, jugular vein, and there's a jugular vein pulsation here. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure the jugular venous pressure. And so I'm taking my ruler, and I'm placing it on the sternal angle. And then as I do that, I'm looking for the point of highest oscillation of the jugular venous pulse. And I'm measuring here that it, his jugular venous pressure is one centimeter with the head of the bed at 30 degrees. <clears throat> and uh, this is normal as a jugular venous pressure should be less than three centimeters and so it is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate his carotid arteries. And the head is perfectly turned to the left here. And I'm checking for any thrills and I do not feel any thrills, but it is a two plus. It's neither bounding nor thready. It has a regular uh, rhythm. And if I were to palpate here for a full minute, it would be a rate in the 70s. And again, I'm gonna have him turn his head just a little bit this way. And I'm palpating for the carotid pulse and separately so as not to occlude perfusion to the brain. And I'm noticing here that it is a two plus, neither bounding nor thready. I do, I do not appreciate any thrills and it is a regular rhythm and a rate in the 70s. That's perfect, thank you. And now I'm gonna go ahead and auscultate, oh. I'm gonna auscultate the carotids with my diaphragm and a bell, having him turn his head just a little to the side. So I have the diaphragm here and I have the bell and I'm not noticing any bruits or turbulence and there is not uh, a delay and then uh, I noticed that it is um, a regular uh, rhythm and a rate in the 70s. And then again, I'm gonna also take care of the diaphragm and the bell. And again, there's no bruise or turbulence and the rhythm is regular and the rate is in the 70s. And it is a nice, smooth, brisk sound and that's a normal finding. And then I'm gonna go ahead and examine the chest and I note the symmetry of the sternum here's midline and for sake of the video I'm going to have him leave his shirt on for modesty but I would have the shirt off in clinic and I'm also noticing for the chest that there is no pectus excavatum or pectus carinatum and um, he has symmetric chest rise and no signs of distress here and also there is no ecchymosis noted either and then uh, I can have him sit up just a little bit more here. And then I'm noticing uh, there are no precordial pulsations. Um, I don't see any obvious heaves or lifts. And also here at the point of maximal intensity, I don't see an apical uh, pulsation either. And that's the midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space. And that's a normal finding. And I can go ahead and palpate here and I can palpate for the point of maximal intensity of the apex of the heart. 
And I can palpate a brisk tapping, and that's normal. And it's less than three centimeters, uh, which is also a normal finding. And if I could not palpate that, I could have him lay on his left side and hold his breath in order to palpate the, um, the point of maximum intensity. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, palpate for um, any thrills. And I'm palpating here in the second intercostal space to the right of the sternal border. And there are um, no thrills or pulsations, heaps or lifts noted. And here in the second intercostal space, the pulmonic region, this was the aortic, um, aortic region, this is the pulmonic region. To the left of the sternum, second intercostal space, there's no heaves, lifts, or thrills or pulsations. And Erb's point here in the third intercostal space, uh, to the left of the sternal border and about a centimeter further um, laterally. Again, the same findings. And in the fourth intercostal space, and this is the tricuspid area, again, there is no uh, pulsations, thrills, keys, or lifts. And then we did already talk about the point of maximum intensity there. And so next, um, I'm going to go ahead and auscultate. And I'm auscultating for, I'm sorry, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, inspect the abdominal aorta first. So go ahead and lay back here. And in terms of the uh, abdomen, I don't see any pulsations, heaves, or lifts, and that's a normal finding. And so two centimeters here in the epigastric region above the umbilicus, I'm going to palpate um, for uh, the aorta. And I'm noticing that it's less than three centimeters, and it's a plus two, and it's a regular rhythm and a rate in the 70s where I can palpate for a full minute. And I don't uh, appreciate any thrills, and that's a normal finding. Okay, and so uh, while you're here, I can listen to the uh, abdominal aorta with the diaphragm and the bell, and it's a breath smooth sound. I don't notice any turbulence or breweries. Again, regular rate and rhythm. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and listen in the uh, second intercostal space, aortic region with the diaphragm and the bell. And I'm not appreciating any murmurs, there's no clicks, there's no friction rubs, um, no gallops, so there's no S3 or S4, and I am appreciating an S1 and S2 sound. And then over to the pulmonic area, that's the second intercostal space, left sternal border, and this was the right sternal border, I'm not sure if I said that. I'm listening with the diaphragm and the bell. And here it could be normal to hear a physiologic splitting of S2. And what this is, is when the patient breathes in, there's increased intrathoracic pressure with inspiration. And this causes an increase in central venous pressure, which causes a prolongation of the um, right ventricular ejection time. And thus it causes a delay in the pulmonic valve closure and so S2 then would be split between the aortic valve closure and the pulmonic valve closure. Uh, but I'm not hearing any physiologic split of S2 for him. And then I'm going to go ahead and auscultate in the, um, and that was the diaphragm and bell. And I'm going to auscultate in the third intercostal space. This is Herb's point, left of the sternal border here, with the diaphragm and the bell. And I do not appreciate any murmurs, clicks, or friction rubs, or gallops. And then I'm going to listen here in the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line with the diaphragm and the bell to the apex of the heart, the point of maximum um, intensity here. And again, I do not appreciate any murmurs, clicks, friction rubs, or gallops. I do hear S1, S2, and there is no S3 or S4. And those are all normal findings. And I believe I did listen already to the abdominal aorta. And so those are all the uh, points of the uh, heart there. And I'm going to go ahead and listen to the femoral arteries. And uh, I would have them lower the drape where we in clinic, but for sake of modesty here, I'll have them keep the trousers up. And so <clears throat> I'm auscultating here in the femoral artery with the diaphragm and the bell. And I'm noticing that there are no bruises or turbulence to the breast 
smooth sound and it's a regular rhythm and a rate in the 70s. And again here with the diaphragm and the bell and I have the same findings. And next I'm going to go ahead and inspect his extremities, the feet and the arms, the legs, the hands. And I'm noticing that he has a pink color and he appears dry with no diaphoresis. He has no varicose veins, no shunts present. There uh, is no clubbing of the fingers. Uh, there's no cyanosis. And clubbing would indicate uh, COPD or emphysema. And uh, <clears throat> cyanosis here of the lips or the fingers uh, would indicate hypoxia. And there's none of that uh, on the toes or the fingers. He also has no splinter hemorrhages present, which would be an indication of endocarditis. I do not see that on any of his extremities. And also he has no uh, tar staining, which would indicate smoking behaviors. And there's no tar staining on the fingers. And next, uh, I noticed that there's no lymphadenopathy or edema either. And he has normal and even hair distribution. On the legs, there's no shiny skin, which would indicate poor perfusion. And then I'm going to go ahead and palpate here. And I notice there's no nodules, no lymphedema, no pitting. And the skin is warm and dry in here as well and here as well and there's no pitting there's no edema there's no varicosities and then I'm, I do want to go ahead and palpate the pulses <clears throat> and so I'm gonna do this uh, together so that I can see if they're symmetric and equal and I'm gonna begin with the brachial pulses here and I do notice there are a plus two, there's no thrills. And it's a regular rhythm with a rate in the 70s. And I'm moving down to the radial pulses. <coughs> and these are also a plus two with a regular rhythm rate in the 70s. They're strong with no bounding or threadiness and no thrills. And also I'm gonna go ahead and palpate uh, the, the femoral pulses. And so here on the right, I do palpate a plus two, there's no thrills, neither bounding nor thready. It's a regular uh, rhythm with rate in the 70s where I do palpate for a full minute. And here again, on both sides, same findings here on the left. And then I'm going to go ahead and palpate for the popliteal pulses. Just having him flex his knee <coughs> slightly, feeling medial to lateral here deep in the fossa. And I am able to palpate a two plus pulse that's neither threading nor bounding, has a regular rhythm with a rate in the 70s, and there are no thrills. And again here, the same finding on the left side. And then I'm going to go ahead and palpate for the posterior tibial pulses. <coughs> also are plus two with a regular rhythm rate in the 70s and no thrills. And then here, the dorsalis pedis pulses. They are plus two, neither bounding nor threading, regular rhythm right in the 70s, and no thrills palpated. And I'm gonna go ahead and check his capillary refill. I'm checking all the fingers and all the toes here. And I'm noticing with pressure, his capillaries blanch, but then the pinkish red color returns in less than three seconds. And I'm doing that here on all his fingers. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and the same findings here on the left hand, capillary, capillary refill is less than three. And then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and let's um, think now if I'm missing anything here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the feet last because I don't wanna touch anything up top before I touch the feet. Just thinking here if I missed anything. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and test the toes for capillary refill, and I am seeing that they're less than three seconds. And all the toes. That's wonderful. Thank you. That ends our cardiovascular exam.